I went to talk to former Def Jam president Carmen Ashurst Watson about the shift in lyrical content in rap music. The time when we switched to gangster music was the same time that the majors were bought up all the labels. Right? And I don't think that's a coincidence. At the time that we were able to get a bigger place on the, in the record stores and a bigger presence because of this major marketing uh, capacity, um, the music became less and less um, conscious. We went to Columbia and then the next thing I know our our uh, producers of Public Enemy were over producing a, an Ice Cube album and then the next thing I know we're pushing a, a group called Bitches with Problems, BWP. And once that per perpetuated into one thing and corporates get involved, yes you'll sell two million NWAs as opposed to one million PE. And you're gonna go from fight to power to gin and juice. Laid back. With my mind on my money and my money on my mind. Now once the market forces have helped that shift come along, that's when you get 60, 70 percent of the buying community now is a white community. After 700,000 is all white people. Uh, after, after your scan passes 700,000 is all white people. And he's well past 700,000, so the white people want to hear that killing average. Yeah, they want to hear you. about that. I was on the Daytona Strip when I saw this white guy in his SUV blasting fabulouses, keeping it gangster. How you going, man? Pretty good. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen, man. Where, where you from? I'm from uh, Columbus, Ohio. We born and raised? Oh, uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Is this your car? Uh... I wish are, it was. Are you, are you fronting? Are you fronting like it's your car? <laughs> yeah, I am fronting like it's my car, but nah, it's my dad's. How, how long you been listening to the hip-hop, man? Seven, eight years. I mean, it, since, it, since it started coming out in 91, 92, ever since then. What, what is it that, that draws you to hip-hop, you know what I mean? What draws me to hip-hop? Yeah. Just the pure emotion in the, the beats. I mean, I love the beats. I, I mean, I love every lyric that they spit. I mean, everything about it is just, just it's, it's my style. I mean, I mean, you guys, color people could say that it's their music, but I mean, I can get down to it just as much as they can. I, Who are you, man? Did you, did you just say color people? <laughs> I, don't even know man, I don't know what, what, what term do you want me to use? I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean I, I'm, I I'm trying to be, I'm not a racist at all. I, I, that's I, why I, I, I feel like I can come down here and just roll and, and I can have no problem. No one's gonna try to do anything at me. I mean, I'm just trying to have a good time down here. I hear you, man. It is something that's as put on as baggy jeans for white boys. It is as put on as a fitted baseball cap and a do-rag. Is that's all they get. That's all they're gonna be able to get and identify with. And I know you, I know you white boys, I seen you, I seen you. You know, dude, you are the guys who come up to me and ask me why I am the way I am. And if you don't understand, ain't no way I can tell you. There's no way I can tell you. It comes with this. I've never been to the hood. I've never been to a ghetto. I grew up in, you know, upper middle class, basically white suburbia. We had a very small minority in our town, and that was it. And to listen to stuff like that is a way of us to see almost a different culture, well, a completely different culture. It's something that most of us have never had the opportunity to experience. I've never had to worry about drive-by shootings and the stuff in the, the music. It appeals to our sense of, um, of learning about other cultures and wanting to know more about something that we'll never probably experience. Does it reinforce stereotypes about yeah. black yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It As does. Especially if they talk about growing up poor and never having this, all this money, and then they come on MTV or VH1 with their large chains and their nice cars, and they sing a song about busting caps in people. If you really want to know where this kind of, you know, predatory black man comes from, look back at films like Birth of a Nation. Birth of a Nation is hailed by critics as a cinematic breakthrough in a great American movie. But D.W. Griffith's blockbuster, made in 1915, spread fear and paranoia about black masculinity with its mean-spirited stereotypes of black men as lazy, untrustworthy, oversexed and dangerous, particularly to white women, and gave rise to the Ku Klux Klan. If the KKK was smart enough, they would have created gangster rap because it's such a caricature of black masculinity, yet young people of color are being presented with this idea that somehow these people represent us and they're cool and they're gonna, they're gonna stand in for us against the white power structure while they're completely subservient to that white power structure.
It's really an ironic, um, uh, sad reality. I asked BET executive Stephen Hill about reinforcing stereotypes, but he just passed the buck. Probably what, what probably should happen is you should look at people who are actually making the videos. We are, in some ways, partly a video channel and play the videos that are that are given to us. As an African American man, how do you feel about what you see? I mean, do you? Okay. He just walked away without answering my question. BET is the cancer of black manhood in the world because they one they've one dimensionalized us and commodified us into being one a one trick image. We throwing money at the camera, we flashing you know jewelry that can can, can actually give a town in Africa water. <laughs> we got 160 million dollar contracts because we got happy niggas. What do you think about that as artists? As artists, the ones who participate, do you feel like you're reinforcing any stereotypes? Do y'all talk about that? They couldn't even look you in the eye. <laughs> Fuck that. We, we, we can really get to the to the nuts and nails of this. They couldn't even look you in the eye. They, number one, cats can't even look a man in the eye. If they look a man in the eye, they think it's confrontation. Why? Because they can't answer. They can't answer to it. And it's almost like now you talk about, and it ain't their fault. This is all systematic. It's all part of uh, genocidally breaking things down to the point where people are going to follow a program that gets played out for them. This is the play. This is the playbook. Y'all going to follow through. And, you know, come on, you robot. You know, you crank robots up. They're going to just follow, you know, they're going to do what robots do, what you told them what to do.